uh, about a conversation we, we were going to have at this time regarding the release of, well, depending on who you talk to, either a sequel to um, or add-on to the very famous Pulitzer Prize winning book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee that has been released. It's called, uh, it's called Go Set a Watchman. Um, and it comes 55 years after the original book was released. Now, this thing is going absolute gangbusters for a number of reasons. The first, of course, is an absolute classic, classic piece of literature, classic piece of American literature. It is as famous as it gets. And doubtless people have, uh, listening have either read it or they were made to read it in school. In any case, everyone has some degree of familiarity with the original text, To Kill a Mockingbird. No follow-up was ever written or released by Harper Lee until now. 55 years later. And that, of course, has brought with it some controversy because some elements of the new book might change how we think about some characters in the old. Also, some might people have suggested, and in fact, Harper Lee's agent had to respond to reports that suggested that people had taken advantage of the 88-year-old in getting this manuscript out there and publishing it that maybe some of the advice she was getting was not to her own benefit. It does seem odd that 55 years later there's been a change of heart. But then again, maybe it's none of our business. Interest in people's thoughts on this. Have you picked it up? Have you interested in it? Are you going to read it? Do you remember reading To, to Kill a Mockingbird? 8223 is the number. Um, Terry Barnes uh, is someone we speak to on a whole range of social policy matters who has, I think, written a very interesting piece for ABC's The Drum about whether or not we should all go read Go Set a Watchman. G'day, Terry. G'day, Will. How are you? I'm well, mate. You're a big, big Harper Lee fan, aren't you? Oh, look, I think, uh, well, besides the fact I did have to read it at school, I think it's one of the best and most brilliant books I've ever read. Mm. And uh, the central character in it, the lawyer Atticus Finch, I mean, uh, was was a hero that many of us look up to. I mean, who stood up for right, who uh, was colourblind in the way that he did things, and that had principles. And uh, and that's basically being questioned by this new novel, which actually isn't new compared to To Kill Mockingbird, because it actually was written years before it. Yeah, and, and it, the, 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 which is where I think there's been some con confusion in terms of how people have talked about it. Written before, well, but right. events set after. Yes, but if you read, if you look at the way it's being marketed, it's like it is a sequel, yes. which is absolute. Well, frankly, it's rubbish. Yeah. Um, you have suggested, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, Tira, I know you'll do a good job of, of arguing your own position, that, that we, shouldn't, we shouldn't bother with this, this particular book. Well, look, I think basically on all evidence, it's a, a profit-raking exercise, both by the literary agent and by the publishers. And to be honest, I think publishing this novel is, is being, it's, it's happening because it is by Harper Lee. It's not because it's a good novel, necessarily. Um, it's a work-in-progress novel. I mean, it was the first effort that actually led to, to Kill a Mockingbird, mm. and that's fine if you're a, uh, an English student or an academic, but I think for the rest of us, I mean, to basically market it as if it is the uh, sequel to the original book and uh, do it in such a way that uh, it's uh, seen as a, a brand-new top-ranked top novel, I think is uh, misleading <laughs> to the public, but also I think it also shows that uh, perhaps making that money, making the profit from, from the fact that this book existed is more important than uh, Harper Lee and her literary uh, legacy. Um, so is it then the, the fact that it was released at all or just the way in which it's been marketed that, that concerns you? I think it's both. Okay. Uh, I, I've certainly been looking at uh, the Australian publisher Penguin's uh, campaign to uh, push it and it's all about uh, going back to uh, to the characters and to the, to the um, rural Alabama where it's set. But the thing is, it's not. It's actually the first effort submitted by Harper Lee to her publisher. And actually, the editor at that publisher said, look, it's a good book, but it needs a heck of a lot more. And why don't you try and write it from the child's point of view? Go back 20 years from when, when it's set and look at, mm. the, look at uh, the girl's childhood. And that is the book that finally evolved from what has just been published. So really, if I was Harper Lee, and I... And I don't presume to speak for it. I, I think I would rather sort of rest on my laurels with the one brilliant novel, just like Margaret Mitchell, the author of Gone with the Wind, did with hers. Yeah. Is it a bit... I mean, I think I find some of the, the, the rhetoric and, and the debate that, that surrounds this book um, is quite elevated. Uh, there's a degree of emotion because I think at its heart you've got some themes about race and you've got a book that was incredibly important and, and a character, right. Atticus Finch, who was quite heroic, and some of that has been questioned... 
um, in in this new book. But if if we were to strip it away and look at this in terms of in some other area, um, for example, let's 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 strip away all the elevated themes and say, is this any different from George Lucas following up his Star Wars trilogy? with absolute rubbish thereafter. I mean, this this happens from time to time, doesn't it? Sometimes people tarnish their own legacy, and so long as that's their own decision, there's there's no real issue, is there? Uh, yeah, but that, I think you, the golden line in what you just said is it's that, their own decision, and there's yes. no clear evidence that this is Harper Lee's yes. own decision. It might be her literary agent, it might be her publisher, but it's not necessarily Harper Lee's. So I think uh, if it, look, the way I see it is that... Uh, she came up with such a brilliant book after going through uh, revisions of this one that's just been released. Why would she trash the legacy of that book by uh, putting this out? But mm. again, I can't speak for Harper Lee. I can only guess. But uh, yeah. I think the fact that we haven't heard from her, and there are good reasons for that, being that she's 89, she's very frail, she's deaf and she's almost blind, uh, uh, that's understandable. But... Uh, is it her own wish that this book is out? I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and for mine, that's that's precisely with this argument that starts and stops. We, we did a story yesterday about the, and this some will suggest this is drawing a long bow, but I think you know there's some there's some similar themes here. We talked about the financial abuse of the elderly, where suddenly they become susceptible to all sorts of bad financial advice. Sometimes that, and quite often, it comes from people that are quite trusted, and indeed within the family. And it was funny. We yeah. did the story, and then I read your piece, and I thought, wow, there's a there's some similar themes here. It feels a bit like that now i can't prove it i don't know that that's that's the case i don't know it's not the case either which is i guess what you're saying um and that would seem a great shame in a in a literary sense terry um how do we reflect on the first novel based on the release of this one when it's clear that there was a great you know old books are heavily edited and they're done in conjunction with editors and publishers and people like that Um, does it tarnish the skill of the writing at all when it's clear that there was a lot of revision done on to kill a mockingbird yeah, that's a good question. The way I see it is, I think, as I said earlier, it's of interest to academics and English students, but mm. it's not necessarily uh, something the general public should really focus on. I mean, the, what we should cherish is the original book and, to be honest, the film that came from it, which yes. is absolutely brilliant. Yep. Uh, but uh, but to, when you've done a book like this, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, and then gone back to it, what it evolved from. I think uh, it does un- it does devalue the book, but I think the thing also is that the key character in the book, Atticus Finch, uh, basically the, the Killer Mockingbird version is the, is somebody that uh, generations of people now have looked up to, uh, that have inspired people to go into public life, into mm. journalism, into politics and so on. Um, and now I'm sure you've got listeners out there who are named Atticus who might be yeah, wondering about whether that's a good thing today. But <laughs> The thing I I guess I'm saying is that uh, um, that Atticus Finch stands for something and uh, I think uh, the publishers and the the literary agents uh, who are basically capitalising on the fact that this is a lost book by the author of To Kill a Mockingbird are actually undervaluing the literary legacy they're actually trying to benefit from. Yeah, I I think there is something to the argument that sometimes themes or characters take on importance that's broader than just the, the original text or or, or wherever, whatever art form they were first formed in. Um, and I think that's a that's a perfectly legitimate part of this argument. Terry, as always, fascinating speaking with you, mate. I think it was a really interesting article you wrote. Um, and and it, is, it is a very interesting debate that's going on at the moment. And at the heart of it, you'd hate to think there's a very vulnerable person that's been taken advantage of. Well, I think I agree with all of that, and thanks for asking me again. No, good on you, Terry. Terry Barnes, we speak to on a whole range of social policy matters and federal politics, and he turned his hand to writing um, an opinion piece about um, this, what's being marketed, as Terry says, as something of a sequel to To Kill a Mockingbird, when that was never really the intention. Uh, Written beforehand, I think three years before To Kill a Mockingbird was released, and here it is released 55 years later. Now, at the end of the day, if someone wants to go and make money out of something they've written, I don't think it's anyone else's business. But the question is here, someone who has spent their whole life saying, I don't want this out there, um, has suddenly at 88 and suffering from uh, a number of illnesses and things has released this book. Um, Now, without having being able to hear from the actual person, it's tough to make up your mind. Uh, But I can certainly get why people who, who have been inspired by that first novel have suddenly picked up this and felt cheated.